Your heart and your liver are friends. They're neighbors. They've lived together your whole life. They've gotten to know each other. You should get to know their friendship too. So, the liver. Let's draw a liver. Okay, livers are usually kind of bigger on this side. Call that the right lobe. And then they're a little flatter and longer on this side. Uh, that's not a great drawing of a liver, but it's the general idea. Your liver is big on this side, and then it comes across your body and forms a left lobe, which is kind of a, like a tongue or something like that. So there's your liver, right lobe, left lobe. Now what about the heart? Where does the heart live? Well, it turns out that the heart kind of kicks back and lives right around here. Right, so here's a heart. Oh, let's, give it a, let's give it a nice aortic arch here. That's nice. And what about here? Let's give it, let's give it a, uh, a superior and inferior vena cava. So it turns out that the, I can't draw it behind it here because it's not 3D, but the inferior vena cava runs directly behind your liver and the liver veins, the hepatic veins, drain directly into uh, the vena cava, inferior portion. So the blood comes this away and passes behind the liver and then goes directly into the heart. So there's a, I have to do it with my hands to show you. Look, here's your heart, here's your inferior vena cava. Here's your liver, and the inferior vena cava runs behind the liver, and the liver actually wraps around it and empties into it. So in terms of an intimate connection, the liver is literally emptying the cleansed blood. Uh, it's a cleaner, right? It's emptying the cleansed blood directly, directly into the inferior vena cava, and they're proximate to each other. So every movement of the heart is a movement of the liver. They're connected through the inferior vena cava within, just like right there, there, it's continuous. The only thing intervening between them, let me see, would be the respiratory diaphragm. So the, the liver wears the respiratory diaphragm like a, like a hoodie, right? Like a, like a hoodie on a sweater. Uh, and so, and yet the blood continuity goes right through the diaphragm. The inferior vena cava passes through the diaphragm directly uh, as a procession of the heart. So the liver and the heart ride together. The heart is like, is like the rider on the horse, the, the liver being the saddle. But not only that, the heart is talking directly to the liver by percussion, right? So the heart beats and the liver, boom, boom. Imagine a friend doing this to you patting you gently on the shoulder, bump, 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 and then you start to run, bump, 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 bump. The liver is going to respond to that. It doesn't need a nerve input. It doesn't need a hormonal input. It's being rapidly percussed in a way that tells it, ah, you might want to chill out a minute here. When this phase passes of activity, we can get back to our sort of cleansing and digestive processes. So heart-liver friendship, both physical, direct communication. Imagine the liver to be like a solid drum and the heart is beating on it, literally, punk, punk, as well as the vascular connection, which is a direct continuity. I like to say that the liver is a fungus on the heart tree. Have you ever seen an oak tree with say a chicken of the woods growing on it. It was a beautiful, a beautiful fungal uh, uh, formation, edible, delicious, uh, that forms around say a big tree. Well, that's what we have here. The liver is like a kind of an outgrowth of the inferior vena cava positioned beautifully to protect the heart as the liver filters the blood. I'd say that's a pretty beautiful and intimate friendship. And I hope that you'll maybe bless your heart and bless your liver in their friendship 
in their intimacy, in their service to you. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to study more with me, go to gilheadley.com. There's a ton of stuff there. Enjoy.